is concerning the name that you are about to receive. Uh, first of all, I'll go right into it and tell you this. You might have thought about why in um, Ghana, West Africa, where you are right now, you have a lot of names that start with the letter Q, and they sound like this. Kwame, Kwasi, Kwadro, Ku Kwa. See all that KKK and Kwa Kwa Kwa? Mm. It's a reason for that, mm. okay? First of all, every letter of the alphabet has, well, most letters, not all, but most letters have some type of symbolical expression of energy. They have frequencies that they are related to. And K, I'll give you an example of how easily you can begin to decipher a lot of the imagery that we're having in this reality that we're living and what it does and how it affects us. K looks like this. Two helixes with one helix wrapped around the other helix and continuing like this. It's a helix that's straightforward and another helix that goes like this. That's K. Now if you continue K, K will go like this. And we have a symbol in our chemistry that does this. And everybody should know what this symbol represents. What is it? DNA. See how simple that was, right? So K is a hyphenated, shortened expression of DNA. Now, why did our African people choose to use that? First of all, we think that the alphabet and language all came from somewhere else. It did not. Every aspect of it came from here. And the character's representation have only been crick, crack, cross, manipulated, because English means what? You ever see somebody playing pool and they say, oh, he must have put some English on that ball. English means crick, crack, cross, mm. twist it, mm. turn it, twerk it, mm. freak it, dip it, hide it, mm. change it, manipulate it. English means that. You shoot in basketball, oh, the ball went off the rim, bounced off the backboard, and spit around on the tip of the rim, and it went in. <coughs> he must have put some English on that ball. Mm. When you look at Webster's, all the English words are borrowed words from other cultures, right? They just stole a whole language, predominantly stole a whole history, claimed that they were the original people. And the whole world has been bamboozled. And so the names are important for us to come back to because it's to reclaim who we are. I was talking earlier about the power of remembrance. We have to remember who we are, remember why we came here, remember what blessings, guides, and ancestors that came and got our back. We agreed to have this human experience. But we come from a higher source. We came in with a purpose. We came in with guides and angelic forces. That's why they can write stories like Superman, Iron Man, Batman, because they saw that in us. Damn, these people was invincible for hundreds of generations. And they had to find a way to infiltrate us. And they did, eventually. How did they? Trichonology, the same thing they use today because it works. They are the master trichonologists. The only thing that he could do against us was to trick us. And we begin to believe the hocus pocus because he has technology to make you think you see what you ain't saw. And you go right along with it. They just keep repeating it. And he knows what happened with the human mind. The human mind has to create an illusion just for you to live in this reality. Here's an example of that. When you see a railroad track, it looks like two parallel rails, right? You stand on the parallel track with one foot on each rail. When you look up the track, as you look into the distance, what happens to the rails? They do what? They merge, they narrow. It looks as if they're coming together. You know it's impossible for them to come together, but why do your eyes see that? Because in order for you to exist in this reality, your mind has to create its own illusion for you to understand, understand that there is something called depth of field. And for you to see that illusion, your brain creates that. For you to say depth of field is further away than where I am. Or time space continuum, to say more quantum physics. Nevertheless, our own mind has constantly been doing that. 
So the diabolical system that we live in knows how to tap into that aspect of our super subconscious and feed it and program it. That's why we have something called Tell Live Visions and they have programs on Tell Live Visions. So they program you and they tell you what? The truth. That's the agreement that who's the most enlightened angel? Called who? That was struck down from the heavenly forces. Lucifer. Why was he called Lucifer? What the name Lucifer mean? Enlightened one. Lucid. Light. He was the most enlightened angel, wasn't he? Yes. But he kept being what? Disobedient. Creative force says, son, you can't be like me. You gotta get out. I'm gonna strike you down there for that other creation. And Lucifer says, Mother, Father, I'll go down there and I'll show you that they cannot be divine. They're gonna be in a physical, existent, material world and they are never going to be able to be divine gods like us. So. It's not a good project. And the creative force is a boy, I'm telling you, I'm going to slap you down there. I'm going to smite you. But I want you to promise me one thing. What's the promise that Lucifer gave? Always tell them the truth. Lucifer said, I'll gladly tell them the truth. Lucifer tells you the truth every day. But you would still rather believe a dressed up lie before you believe the naked truth. Ain't that right? We still believe a building got hit, one of the greatest buildings in the world got hit by an airplane and the airplane just didn't disintegrate it in the air. Fear that With all the evidence, you still believe in that that happened. I mean, many people still do. Some of them in my own family. But nevertheless, it's like everything that is happening in the world that we've been tricked and fooled, now we're in a time of existence where great revelation for truth is right in front of you. And if only if you are afraid of it, if only you don't want to accept it, is when you ignore it. Because now is the time that our consciousness can be hidden. And the devil also knows that. That's why he said, I will tell them the truth at all times. But he tells you the lie, the quarter lie, the, the half truth, the half, the one eighth, the one third. So he gives you so much information. You got these people believing this, these people believing this, deep, and he knows that separate us, keep us believing this, that, and the other, and we'll never be together. Give it to these organizations. Kappa apple side, applesauce pie, soul chips nine, and they all body some Greek shit. Everything is a distraction for us to come back to our original sound. But on this sojourn, Africa for Africans, the return to soul, the journey of a lifetime tour. This is the reason why Bomani loved the coming, because we have high reasonings. We're in the center of the earth. One of the closest land masses to the center of the earth is right here. We only approximately 350, 360 miles away from the zero, zero longitude. Special things happen here. Over my 25 years of being here, I've seen some incredible, I have some incredible African stories about people coming over here, having revelations, having epiphanies, having change of life, and even sometimes transitioning. Came over here to pass away. We have bear witness a number of, a lot of different variables of why we take this journey across these waters. But one thing that we agree with is that we are fulfilling prophecy because it was deemed that one day we shall return. One day we shall return. That's why it's important. That's why. So y'all have, you could say, fulfill prophecy by coming home. Didn't happen by coincidence. I'm just talking because I'm waiting for everybody to finish up and then we will start the names. Um, should I go back about the names and tell you some more how significant it is? Now that you know why we have the K, the K is already explained because K represents DNA, and if we have DNA as this physical existence, our DNA comes from the highest source, what? God. God Almighty Goddess. Now, in the world you hear this expression, you hear Ja. We all know what that means. We hear Allah. We hear Ah, La, Ja, Yehovah. We hear all that Nyamre Yoka, Num. When we hear all these different expressions, we know that it means one thing. It denotes God Almighty God. Ja, God. Ya, God. And in Ghana, West Africa, we say Kwa. 
Five. Every time you hear Ah, Allah, Jehovah, Yehovah, Ah means God. So here we say Qua. Qua means God. Now, our names, additionally to that, DNA K representing God, our bloodline from God, we also know that your current names of the week are related to what? These Roman and Greek gods? We are worshiping the sun on Sunday. We are worshiping Saturn on Saturn Day. We are worshiping moon on moon day. See? Wednesday, Wudin. Thursday, you know Thursday, the most one that we all know, Thor. So they have us worshiping their names and giving energy to their gods all the time and renaming ourselves after them. So this is the importance again of why the ambassador added the names. It's very important to call yourself and remember who you are. Now, and additionally, once again, the third point is this. Your names are not only day names delegated to the day of the week. Your names that you're about to be given is more relegated to a particular event in the story, the African story of creation. Now, that means you gotta know what happened on that day of creation. If you know what day you were born, what happened, what was the event that occurred on that creation day? For example, if you're born on Sunday and you know the creation story, what happened, what did God Almighty Goddess do on Sunday? Rest. Very good. Now, let me tie the name into what God did. You assume the event is called rest. But the name in Ghana, West Africa, further explains and etymologizes the real meaning of the name. Because once again, the name is based on the event that happened in creation. Now, which day of the week is Sunday? First or seventh? It's the first. We all agree that Sunday is the first day of the week. Okay. If Sunday is the first day of the week and you say God rested on the first day of the week, why did God rest on the first day? <laughs> Don't make sense, right? right? No. That's right. why Sunday is not the first day of the week. Mm -hmm. If you all take out your phones right now and you look at your phone calendar, what's the first day of the week? Monday. Monday. Every calendar in your house is what? Monday. Mm -hmm. And the reason why that is is because they want you to remember the first day of the week being Monday because sun Monday is the what? The first work day, <laughs> slaves. <laughs> so the slave mentality want us to continue to think that on Monday is the day that we have to give the first day. Okay, get up, nigga, get out in the field and start cracking that cone and shuffling that sugar. <laughs> so it's a new modern day type of slavery to get you to think and make, take you away from nature. Now, let's get back to the etymology of the name on Sunday. The names have been bastardized today because you just say Essie, but that's not the full name. Again, you said that God rested on Sunday, but the name tells you exactly what God did in a different way. When you hear the meaning of the name, this is the meaning of the name. Esida. Not just Essie. Kwa Esida. Kwa Esida. Kwa, we already said, means what? God. God Almighty Goddess. Now listen to this part. Asida. At the end of the word, you hear Da. Da here in Ghana, West Africa, means day. Kwa Asida. Listen to the center of the word. Kwa Asida. Ascend. God ascended down from the heavens to start the work of creation. Didn't sit down, didn't rest. Came down from the heavenly plane to this material work and said, let me start the work on Sunday. Okay, first thing, tomorrow I'm getting ready to, now that I'm down here, I'm gonna get over, I see what needs to be done. Tomorrow, Monday, bam! What did God do on Monday? What's the name? Quadro. Quadro. 
not Kojo, <laughs> Quadro. Now, what happened on the event of creation on Monday? Only biblical students. Something happened on Monday. Quadro. That's right. You're right on it. And what was that called? The creating of the heavens and the earth. He he raised the primordial waters above and the water below. And what did he put in the middle of it? It's called what? Starts with an F that holds the air, so holds the water. We see the blue water in the sky. The firmament. There go the students. The firmament. What is the firmament? Air. Air and water. And in, in chemistry, what do we call air and water? Hydrogen. And what's the name? Quadro. <laughs> wow. <coughs> Every name is like that. When you know what happened on the event. Are y'all ready for your names? Everybody finish? Let's get the plates. Can you tell them to come and get the plates? We're going to do this nice and smooth. And then maybe I'll tell some of you, you got to do your own homework. Like if you're born on a Friday. Just go and look up online what happened in the ancestral story of creation on Friday. And when you see what happened, see if that fits your personality. Because the names here are saying it does. Okay. If you're born on Friday, your name is Effia or Kofi. Fi means what? Home. Kok means go. Go home on Friday. <laughs> Fi Ankra, the safety and the security of the home. So people born on Fridays are homebodies. They have immaculate homes. They are usually people that the whole family like to come and visit them because they are great hosts. And they have immaculate homes. That's the day that the creative forces made the first known for humankind called the Garden of Eden. That happened on Friday. I tell you, it's beautiful. I'm not gonna, when y'all look it up yourself, you would say, this happened on the creation and my name is this that means that. I am like that. You'll be shocked. Be shot. It's beautiful. 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 It's